Welcome to Music and Life, KM. Today, we're taking a trip back to 1981 to explore the top 5 singles from the Billboard Year End Hot 100 chart. Let's dive into some fun facts and interesting details about these iconic songs that defined the music scene in 1981. Number 5. In the vibrant early months of 1981, a powerful rock anthem was born that would leave an indelible mark on the music world. Rick Springfield, the talented Australian singer-songwriter, penned and performed Jesse's Girl, a track that would catapult him to international fame. Released in February 1981 as part of his album, Working Class Dog, the song quickly found its way into the hearts of listeners. By the end of March 1981, Jesse's Girl had entered the Billboard Hot 100, embarking on a remarkable journey up the charts. It took 19 weeks of steady climbing before it finally reached the coveted number one position on August 1, 1981. The song held this top spot for two weeks, marking Springfield's only chart-topping hit. Overall, Jesse's Girl spent an impressive 32 weeks on the Billboard charts securing its place as the fifth most significant song on the Billboard year-end Hot 100 singles of 1981. Springfield's homeland, Australia, also embraced the song, propelling it to number one. This success was further solidified when Springfield received the Grammy Award for Best Male Rock Vocal Performance, a testament to the song's powerful impact and his vocal prowess. Even years later, in March 1984, Jesse's Girl, made its way to the United Kingdom, where it peaked at number 43 on the UK singles chart. Jesse's Girl continued to resonate with audiences long after its initial release. Springfield recorded an acoustic version for his album, Karma, in 1999, and the song's enduring popularity was confirmed when it was ranked number 20 on VH1's list of the 100 greatest songs of the 80s in 2006. Its cultural impact was also evident in its inclusion in movies like Boogie Nights, 1997, or 13 Going on 30, 2004. The song also made significant appearances in other year-end charts, including Australia, number 15, Canada, RPM Top 100 Singles, number 55, and the US Cash Box, number 3. In the Billboard Hot 100 all-time chart, 1958 to 2018. Jesse's Girl holds the number 186 position, reflecting its lasting influence and popularity. Rick Springfield's Jesse's Girl remains a quintessential power rock anthem, celebrated for its catchy melody and relatable lyrics. It stands as a testament to the enduring appeal of a song that captured the spirit of its time and continues to be cherished by fans around the world. Number 4 In the bustling autumn of 1980, John Lennon, one of rock's most iconic figures, made a triumphant return to the music scene with a single that would leave a lasting legacy. Just Like Starting Over, written and performed by Lennon, was released on October 23, 1980, in the United States and a day later in the United Kingdom. This single was part of his album, Double Fantasy and would become the last release of his life. The song, which reached the top spot both in the United States and the United Kingdom, gained even more profound significance following Lennon's tragic assassination in December 1980. It was his first new single since 1975 and an app choice, reflecting his comeback to the music industry with the title, Starting Over. Initially called simply, Starting Over, just like was added to differentiate it from a song released the same year by Dolly Parton. With a commercial version lasting 3 minutes and 54 seconds and a radio version extending to 4 minutes and 17 seconds, Just Like Starting Over was recorded in New York at the Hit Factory. It became Lennon's most successful single in the United States, staying at number 1 for 5 weeks. Prior to his assassination, the song had reached number 6 on the American charts. And in the last week of the year, it climbed to the top position, becoming the fourth most significant single of the following year on Billboard. In the United Kingdom, the song initially peaked at number 8, but after Lennon's death, it surged to number 1, finishing the year in the second position, just behind the Christmas song. 
There's No One Quite Like Grandma by St. Winifred's School Choir. Interestingly, on January 6, 1981, three of John Lennon's songs were in the top five of the UK chart. Just Like Starting Over not only resonated on year-end charts in the United States and the United Kingdom, but also in other countries. It reached number 18 in Australia, number 21 in Canada, and number 4 on the US cash box. In the Billboard Hot 100 all-time chart, 1958 to 2018, it holds the number 68 position. Produced by John Lennon, Yoko Ono, and Jack Douglas, this single remains a poignant testament to Lennon's triumphant and final return to music, solidifying his legacy as one of the greatest artists of all time. Number 3 In the fall of 1980, a single titled, Lady, marked a significant milestone in the careers of two music legends, Liano Ritchie and Kenny Rogers. Written by Ritchie and initially recorded by Rogers, this single was part of the album. Kenny Rogers' greatest hits, and was Richie's debut as a producer. Originally intended for Richie's group, Commodores, Lady ultimately found its voice in Rogers, becoming his most successful solo single. The impact of Lady was tremendous for both the singer and the writer-producer. It was the first single to reach the top of four Billboard charts in the 1980s, Singles Chart Country, Hot 100, Adult Contemporary, and Hot Soul Singles. It reached the number one spot in three of these charts. On the Hot 100, it climbed to the top in November 1980 and stayed there for six weeks, tying with the year's most popular song, Blondie's Call Me. In the last week of December, it was displaced by John Lennon's Just Like Starting Over, which would become the fourth most important single of 1981. On the Hot Country Singles Chart, Lady reached number one for one week and hit number 42 on the Hot Soul Singles chart. For Kenny Rogers, Lady was one of many hits on the country charts, having achieved 20 number one hits between 1977 and 2000. However, it was his only solo single to reach number one on the Hot 100, with Islands in the Stream, a duet with Dolly Parton, also hitting that position in 1983. On the Hot Adult Contemporary Tracks chart, Lady was significant as his second single to reach the top position out of a total of eight. Other year-end charts where Lady appeared include Australia 93, Canada RPM Top Singles 43, South Africa 17. In the year-end chart for the 1980s, 1980 to 1989, Lady ranked at number 10 on the US Billboard Hot 100. In the all-time chart of the US Billboard Hot 100, 1958 to 2018, it held the number 60 spot. This single, produced by Liano Ritchie and performed by Kenny Rogers, remains a testament to the brilliant collaboration between these two music giants, solidifying their legacy in the annals of music history. Number 2 In the summer of 1981, the music world was graced with a duet that would become one of the most iconic love songs of all time. Endless Love Written by Liano Ritchie and performed with the legendary Diana Ross, this single was released on June 26, 1981, in the United States. Recorded under the Motown label as part of the soundtrack for the film, Endless Love, a Franco Zeffirelli adaptation of Scott Spencer's novel. The song far surpassed the film in terms of impact and success. Endless Love reached the pinnacle of the Billboard Hot 100, where it stayed for nine consecutive weeks from mid-August to October, making it the second most significant single of 1981. It also topped the R&B chart and the adult contemporary chart. Across the Atlantic, the song achieved notable success, reaching number seven on the UK charts. This single was not just a commercial triumph, it was a record-breaking hit. Billboard magazine declared it the greatest duet of all time. For Diana Ross, Endless Love marked her biggest success, becoming her 18th and final number one hit in the United States, encompassing her illustrious career with the Supremes. For Liano Ritchie, it was a monumental success, marking the beginning of a decade filled with numerous hits. The legacy of Endless Love extended beyond its initial release. 
The song earned Richie a nomination for the Academy Award for Best Original Song. In 1982, it won the American Music Award for Favorite Pop Slash Rock Single. The song's enduring appeal led to various covers by artists such as Luther Vandross, Mariah Carey, Shania Twain, and Kenny Rogers, though none could eclipse the magic of the original duet. Endless Love appeared on numerous year-end charts, including Australia 8, Canada 3, Netherlands, Dutch Top 40 48, Netherlands, Single Top 187, New Zealand 42, South Africa 6, United Kingdom, 76, U.S. Cashbox 1. On the all-time U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart, 1958-2018, Endless Love holds an impressive number 18 position. This timeless ballad, crafted by Liano Ritchie and brought to life with Diana Ross, remains a testament to the power of collaboration and the universal appeal of a beautifully sung love song. It's worth noting that this is the second entry among the top five year-end chart of 1981 in which Liano Ritchie is involved, marking only the beginning of his rise in the decade as a solo artist. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling us your favorite song from this list. Now let's continue our path to the number one song on the Billboard year-end Hot 100 singles of 1981. Number one. In the spring of 1981, a song originally penned in 1974 found its way to the top of the music charts in a spectacular fashion. Betty Davis' Eyes, written by Donna Weiss and Jackie DeShannon, was first recorded by DeShannon but gained immense popularity through Kim Carnes' captivating rendition. Released on March 10, 1981, in the United States, this soft rock classic dominated the Billboard Hot 100 spending a total of nine non-consecutive weeks at number one. Its initial five-week run was briefly interrupted by Stars on 45, before reclaiming the top spot for an additional four weeks. Betty Davis' Eyes was not just the most popular single of 1981, it also garnered critical acclaim, winning the Grammy Awards for Song of the Year and Record of the Year. In Canada, the song held the number two position for 12 consecutive weeks making it the second most significant single of the year, right behind. Stars on 45. In the United Kingdom, it reached number 10, marking Kim Carnes only top 40 hit in that country. Additionally, it ranked as number 12 on Billboard's list of the top songs in the first 50 years of the Hot 100 chart. The song's appeal was truly global, reaching number one in 21 countries. It also found a place in notable lists such as Billboards. The 500 Best Pop Songs. At number 425. Rolling Stones. The 200 Best Songs of the 1980s. At number 137. Betty Davis Eyes. Featured prominently in various year-end charts, including Australia, Ken Music Report 6. Austria, 03 Austria Top 40 16. Belgium, Ultra Top 50 Flanders 37. Canada, Top Singles RPM 2, France 4, New Zealand 6, South Africa 2, US Cashbox 2, West Germany 10. In the all-time chart of the US Billboard Hot 100 from 1958 to 2018, Betty Davis Eyes holds an impressive position at number 17. This song's enduring success and widespread acclaim highlight the timeless nature of a track that, from its inception in the 1970s to its peak in the early 1980s, captured the hearts of listeners around the world. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling us your favorite song from this list. Until next time. You can also donate on my PayPal, musicandlife.km at gmail.com. This was a program for Music and Life by Carlos M. Created by Room KM Productions.